Good morning, good morning. Happy Monday to everybody and may the fourth be with you. Got a special shirt on today. You guys don't recognize it's from The Mandalorian. All right. Glad you guys can be here with me this morning. We are going to talk about all things Junos for now. Day one configuration. I have a switch here with me ready to go. I hope you guys are ready. Let me know where you are coming from and what you guys are having for coffee this morning. And maybe for some of you it's it's afternoon already or it is now evening. But wherever you are, I hope you're staying safe, staying healthy. All right. So I had to postpone this this live to nine o'clock Pacific time because I had a prior commitment at seven o'clock a.m. And so what we're going to do is in this, we're going to talk about um, Junos configuring a juniper switch for the first time it's very much new to me uh, a lot of this is going to be um, you know, experimenting with junos and seeing what we can do and if you hear some background noise it's because right about this time where i record uh the, the garbage truck is passing by <laughs> picking up the trash uh, good morning to you, Anders. I'm glad you like the Baby Yoda as well. And good morning to you, Richard from Toronto. Having a cappuccino. All right. That's awesome. So there's my switch. And the garbage truck is right now just passing by. So if you guys can hear that, let me know and I'll turn down my mic just a bit so you maybe won't pick it up. All right, so with Junos, it's it's definitely a lot different from Cisco iOS, which is where my networking was brought up. And so what we're gonna do is uh, console into this uh, Juniper EX2300. It's uh, an, a, a 12 port switch. It's got some uplinks here. Good morning, uh, Jossy. Thank you for joining again. Glad to have you here. And so you can see it's got some SFP connections right there. I'm definitely consoled in, and I've got it up on my screen right here. If we hit enter, so there's the login. I had to factory default this switch because I had forgotten what the heck I did with it. Uh, because it's been a while, but you can factory default it with this button here. You, you got to hold it down for about 10 seconds and then you could reboot it and it's got a default config. All right, so we've got the, the 12 ethernet ports there on that switch. You can see on the, on the left and then the SFP uplinks, all right? So Junos, for those of you who don't know, it's by, by Juniper. And uh, I'm consoled in. It's got a dedicated management port. We're just going to deal with switching for now. And Junos uh, is interesting to me because uh, it's got, it's very different to Cisco iOS. And I only just started getting uh, into Juniper equipment. And Juniper does have some online resources free for you guys to check out. As you can see here, we've got, uh, I brought up Juniper's documentation. They've got plenty of stuff in regards to even their books that they've published. Here's the, a day one exploring Junos. Highly recommend you guys download this, and I'll put that in the chat. Uh, good morning, Dave. Uh, you are having a, your cafe's already cold. Yeah. Go get it. Go brew a new a new one, and we can get started on Juniper here. 
So I'll post the link to exploring Juno CLI into the chat. There is a delay with the audio. And just wanted to bring the Juniper Enterprise Routing and Switching Certification to your attention. So some of this may dive into the JNCIA Junos exam, the certification. And here are some of the objectives. You got to know some of the Junos OS fundamentals, some of the user interfaces, configuration basics. And so we'll, we'll kind of go through that. And I won't go through routing in, in this live stream because I think it's a little too much as we just get started with Junos. And so what I want to do is talk about the interfaces first because interf uh, Junos uses this virtual chassis port numbering because you could stack a bunch of these switches together. You could have some sort of high availability. And so it uses a, a virtual chassis port numbering where it's numbered as X, um, X slash Y slash Z. So for example, gigabit ethernet dash zero slash zero slash zero. The first one, the first number is the slot. So if there are multiple slots, you would have uh, it start off at zero first, slot zero. And then the second number is uh, the physical interface of the, I guess what's called the PIC or the physical interface card. And in this switch, it's zero. And then you have the last number which is Z or zero, which is the port number on the card as well. So I'm gonna mic, uh, mute my mic for a second because of the background noise. Wow, I've been muted the whole time. <laughs> All right, so let me step back here. All right, let me, I'll, I'll just let you guys know in the chat that I just unmuted my mic. Sorry about that. Garbage truck was passing by, so I had to mute myself. But let me go back to the switch in the beginning. So going back to this switch here and and uh, the interfaces for Junos is different from like Cisco IOX, for example. And what we can do here is look at the, the port numbers. So Junos always starts with zero. So this, this port right here would be uh, GE 0 slash 0 slash 10. 
And so the zero, the first zero, is the slot number. So if there's multiple slots, you'd have a, a number per slot. So it's always zero. And then the second number in there is the physical interface card. And so these are all on this switch, uh, the PIC, P-I-C, physical interface card, these are all zero. And then the last number is actually the port number on that physical interface card. And since there's no physical interface card, it's this is port 10 on that. So GE0010. And the thing to remember is that these the interfaces always start with zero. Everything starts with zero on Juno. So looking at that switch, the first port is zero instead of one. Okay, so that's always something to remember. And so now I'm consoled into my, my, my switch here. And what I wanted to show you guys, if I can exit real quick. Um, when you log in, you get put into to root see if I can scroll up so this is how you can tell I, w I had factory defaulted my switch it says amnesiac and by default when you log into a juniper switch from what I've seen is you get this login and the, the default login is root and it has no password and then it puts you into 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 uh, the the root mode here i don't even remember what it's called but you, i do get these auto image upgrades because i have to run this command to remove these messages and then commit so let's go back and scroll down to the login screen so if you're ever in this state to get to configuration mode we'll have to type in cli and then you'll get this prompt here and then from here, you could do things like show configuration just to get you guys seeing what the configuration looks like. And if you can't tell, this is XML output, which is great for uh, like DevOps where we could use scripting or Python scripts to uh, automate some of our network management and configuration. And so to get into now the actual configuration, uh, configuration mode because I want to get rid of all these auto image upgrades is we just type in configure all right so we've got you, you can see now the prompt has changed and I'll zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see the prompt has changed from this uh, greater than sign here to now this um, ampersand and you can do the same instead of configure, you could type edit as well. So what I'm gonna do is type in um, delete chassis auto image upgrade because I don't wanna see that message. But when you're modifying the configuration like this, you're modifying, you're, you're actually in the candidate configuration. Uh, and so, Nothing changes unless we actually save the configuration to the running config, and that's done with a commit statement. But before we do that, we have to uh, fix the root login because right now it doesn't have a password. And so what we to, to, to change that root login is uh, use set commands to make a lot of changes. And so what we could do, and let me try to move myself over to this side here. And so what we can do now is do set and then system root dash authentication. And we're going to do a plain text password and then just hit enter. And so now it's going to prompt you for what that password is. And I'm going to type in my super secret password of password one, two, three, four with an uppercase P password one, two, three, four. And so now we've set that root password. So again, that command is set system root authentication plain text password. All right, so that's how we set that. So now we've made two changes, right? I'm getting rid of this auto image, auto image upgrade that keeps popping up because I'm not going to use it in this in this demo or in this lab. And I'm also setting the, the password for the root user. So now to save that, we can do a commit, which would just put 
our, our new changes from the candidate configuration to the running configuration. Okay, so remember when we're making changes, we're not actually making changes right there live on the spot. We have actually have to commit those changes. And if we look at commit, there's, I did commit space and then question mark. There's actually a few commands, right? So let me just commit first because I know this is, this is going to drive me nuts with these auto image upgrade uh, messages coming up. So there you go, commit is complete, configuration check succeeds. All right, so now we don't have that message. I'm gonna clear the scroll back and we'll zoom in a little bit more. Okay, I need to resize my windows here for you guys. It keeps showing up. All right, so now if we do, like maybe you wanna see what the configuration looks like now show configuration that doesn't work right and i can't even remember what it the commands are to actually show the configuration because we are in the configuration mode so i think i would have to do show system and then root authentication and then that's where we have the encrypted password for the root so now if i exit out of here right and exit again we're back at this mode. And what I want to do is log in again. So let's see a lie. Oh, you know what? Because I'm in console. So we don't get that. But we're in configuration mode. So the thing with Junos 2 is that when you're working with a little bit more uh, bigger switches and routers, there's virtual chassis member roles. And most of these, uh, there's only two roles. And you're dealing with either the master role or a backup role. And the master role obviously holds all of the, what it's going to do is it ha holds the active routing engine. It runs the Juno software for, the, for a virtual chassis, for example. And then the backup just kind of sits there and, and waits to take over if the master is no longer there anymore. And, and what we just did was go through the root authentication, right? We, went, we used the default root login. And we got placed right into uh, a prompt in which we went into the configuration and removed those auto upgrade messages that kept coming up so it doesn't bother us. And then we set the root password using the plain text method. And you could see here now that when we show it, it's actually encrypted in the configuration. All right, and so one of the cool things to here is to see the configuration, you gotta be in this mode right here. See how the prompt is different. And then we could type, I'll clear scroll back, show configuration. And now we've got here, root authentication with the encrypted password. We could also be um, more efficient with this, with show configuration and then pipe it and kind of grep, which is we're gonna search for root and there's root authentication, but it's not showing the password. The other thing too is you can do show configuration. This is the one I like. We pipe it and we can display the actual commands, which is display set. And so if I hit enter on this, it's actually showing us the actual commands that were used. Some of this is all the default commands, but you can see the commands that, that we could use to enable things. So. Uh, by default, you can see that rapid spanning tree is enabled on the interfaces, and they're using uh, storm control on those interfaces. And LLDP is enabled. All right, so uh, if we want to configure uh, another username, because you don't want to use root for, for everything, we'll go into configure. There is a way to make it so that root cannot log in by default via SSH. And I believe that is with a set system command. Let's see if I can remember this. Um, I don't think I do remember it. Root authentication. Uh, there is a way. Uh, I, I didn't even write it down, but I'll, I think I'll skip that for now. But I want to configure my own username. And so I want to show you uh, a different way to do it where you can use these edit commands, right? So that puts you in there. 
Uh, so you can do, I think, edit user. So I'm hitting question mark to bring up all of these these ways of configuring. So edit system user, I believe it is. See, this is how different it is to me dealing with the Juniper. But the one thing that I did bring with me is this day one configuration in which uh, if, if you haven't already and you're dealing with Juniper, these day one books are really fantastic for learning how to use Junos. And so I'm very new to Junos. And so I, I tried to prepare for this for this live stream by doing this some of these yesterday. And I did have to, I ran into an issue where I had a factory reset, change the password because there was a password in it. And so here, uh, I don't even know if it'll show us how to configure the username. I think that might actually be with, uh, with the other document, the day one exploring Junos command. So that's what I'm gonna bring up, which is setting up user accounts. So here we go where uh, this is the exploring Junos OS CLI, and this is where we do setting up user accounts. You can set up uh, login banners, which I highly recommend doing. We wanna configure these login accounts. So it's, it's edit system login is what we wanna do. So edit system login, which is right here, guys. How did I miss that? Right, so then we want to do edit user, and I'll just give it myself. Right, so now you can see how we're in different, uh, I guess, stanzas here, looking at which mode we're in for configuration. I'm now I was just in like the root mode, just uh, the global configuration, and then now I step down to login, and now I'm in the mode where I'm editing the login for this user account, Roel. And so I want to set the authentication with the plain text password and then hit enter and then assign myself a password. All right. So again, if we do the, the configuration, look at the configuration. So show, actually, because I'm in this, I'm in this mode. Is it a do command? Yeah, see, I'm used to do commands and that doesn't work. We can commit it, but I don't wanna, what I wanna show you is how we're modifying the candidate configuration. There's a show parameter. Well, it's not there, so I have to exit. All right, so let's exit all the way. Oh, we don't wanna do that. Show, but I didn't commit, so we'll commit and uh, one of the things I like doing is a commit check, right? I've, I've done that modifying a Juniper uh, switch and commit just puts the changes there into the running configuration, but a commit check will actually look for uh, the, the correct syntax in your configuration. So if we hit commit check, it'll go through that. And so now, you can see here, my user account is missing a mandatory statement of class, right? And so I, I didn't go through that. So now I should go to edit user or edit system and then login, right? Then edit user or well. And this class, or let's, it's a set class, I think. Set class, there's different classes. We've got an operator, a read-only super user, unauthorized. Um, so I'm just gonna call myself a super user, right? So now I've set the class. If we do a commit check, then we should be able to pass those checks. Yep, so the configuration checks. And my other favorite feature of saving configuration, so I haven't saved anything yet. I'm just doing a quick check to make sure things are okay. There is a uh, commit and quit, which just quits out of configuration mode after you commit. But there's also this commit confirmed. I really like this because it rolls back if you don't confirm your commit. And this is great for, let's say you're, you're about to make a big change on a router, maybe an IP address or at a route for whatever reason, and you can do a commit uh, confirmed 
And that way you can still be logged in and see how things are working. And if it doesn't work, let's say you've lost access to that router or the de uh, network device, it'll just revert back the changes and go back to how it was before you made the changes. And so if we do commit confirmed, you can actually also do uh, a time. And uh, here's the timeout, the number of minutes until automatic rollback. And so this, this feature will actually, uh, the value is in minutes. So if I do commit confirm five, I've given myself five minutes and we'll see that it will take that command. I will have five minutes uh, before I actually have to commit that, that configuration. And so there it says commit confirmed will be automatically rolled back in five minutes unless confirmed, right? So the configuration has been changed. So every time I hit, there's a commit confirm there. If we do show configuration, uh, system logins, I think, yep, login, and user, show configure. I'm still learning a lot of the syntax. There you go. So I've got this user, Rowell. And so if we waited about four minutes, it would just revert those changes. And so now if I, if I log in, I'll do commit because everything looks fine. And then it'll just keep those changes. And what I'll do is I'll create another user account just so you guys can see that show system or set system login user. And um, we'll say like Dave, for example. And then we'll do, I'm missing an argument, authentication, plain text password. We'll set a password. All right, so set system login user Dave class. And remember, we, had to, we, have, we have to set the class, it's mandatory. And let's say I want to make him a read-only user. And then we do a commit check. That'll check everything again to make sure the syntax is correct. And I'll do commit confirmed. Uh, let's do one minute. All right, so we'll, we'll look at the configuration. And after one minute, we should see that this has been removed because it's been rolled back. So now if I do show system login, yeah get that in a minute, right? Show configuration. Wow. Can't remember my commands. So there's Dave, right? Dave, you've got a login. You, you, you're a read-only user to this switch. And I, I hit a commit, confirmed one, but I forgot to actually commit. And we'll actually see some of this roll back. And so the, the user accounts, you can configure, say, a Radius server uh, for external authentication for this uh, Juniper, Juniper switch. And so that's, that's great. So we want to wait for that to, to roll back. It's st we're still waiting for a minute. And then what we'll go into next is configuring a management IP address because it wasn't as simple for me before uh, with, with Juniper, because I had to figure out, okay, um, I, we can configure an IP address right on an interface, say maybe the management interface, because there is a management port right here. But we want to also maybe assign that to a, a VLAN for, you know, I'm used to assigning that to a management VLAN that I create on the switch, so we'll look into that. But let's see, Still have, we have less than, a, it'll be rolled back in less than a minute. All right, so Dave, your account's still there. You've got a user ID. Uh, one of the other things you could do with commit is be able to add a comment as well. So if you're logged in as a specific user and you do some commit commits to the switch, you can add a comment, say, I'm adding Dave's user account. Did it roll back? Oh, there's the rollback, guys. Commit was not confirmed. 
Uh, there's the message automatic rollback complete. So you can see when I ran that show configuration system login, Dave's account is no longer there. So that's a pretty neat feature, I think, with, with Junos without having to reload a switch, right? Um, uh, with Cisco iOS, when you're making changes, before you made the change, you hit a command to say reload in 10 minutes. And then you went and configured your parameters and then you found out it didn't work, but you have to wait 10 minutes and then also wait for the reload and which also created maybe an outage for people. And so here we do a, a commit confirmed and without that commit statement, it just rolls it back. Okay, there's no reload. All right, so let's configure a management IP address. And uh, as I mentioned before, I configure, you can configure an out of band management on the management port, but a lot of times we use in band management because we want to pass that traffic um, to the switch through the uplink, right? So uh, one of the easiest ways is to uh, associate this with what's called a virtual management ethernet interface. And this is what I've read through the day one configuration. And we'll see if I can, I can bring uh, or trunk my uplink to the switch and see if we get a connection. Because right now, what I want to do is give it this IP address. Right? I want to give it that IP address, 172.16.103.250. And you can see that nothing replies on that, on that um, IP address. So here, we go into configure mode. And we'll use a set command. Set interfaces for the virtual management Ethernet. It's, sh it's short for VME. And... You can see, we can go through here and see all these interfaces. And here's VME, Virtual Management Ethernet. And then we go through these things called units, all right? And so uh, I was looking into units. It's kind of an interesting model talking about units, but everything is basically, in the beginning, unit zero. And uh, interfaces have to be associated with a unit. And so we do set interfaces VME unit zero. And if you look here, you could create, it's a logical unit and you could create a, what's like a sub logical unit, which could be like a sub interface. But I'm just gonna do unit zero for now. Family, and, and when you type family, there's different families and with family INET, this is gonna be IPv4, IP version four for the INET, and then we're gonna type in address and then the IP address. What's nice is you could use uh, you know, CIDR notation, just do slash 24, all right? So there we have that command. We wanna do a commit check and see, is that syntax correct? No, it's incompatible with an interface assigned with this address. So I we guess we have to do no, or what's the command? What's the, what is the configuration on this? Uh, yeah, sure. Exit with committed changes, sure. I wanna see what that interface, actually this is where we could use that grep command. So you could just do uh, grep uh, VME. So here it is, it says set interfaces VME unit zero family inet DHCP. And so I wanna know how to get rid of that DHCP. Is it a no set command? That's not, um, I've, this is the part I don't know how to do, deactivate or delete. So delete, uh, delete set I believe is what we would use. No, delete, delete interfaces VME unit zero family inet dhcp would that do it let's see if that's the correct syntax so you can see how i'm like trying to learn how how um junos works how to configure things and it's great to do this in a scenario where you're not doing it live or like in a production environment is what i meant but you can watch me live and figure out all right Rowell doesn't know what he's doing let's see if he can figure things out <laughs> So I've rem uh, hopefully I've removed the the DHCP 
statement to that, right? I'm committing my changes. It's it's set. So now I'll go back and see if I can assign this IP address 172.16 oh, to 103.250. Will it work? We'll check the configuration. Commit check. It's your friend. It checks out, guys. So you can do commit. There's a comment field. You can say um, set IP. Or I think we need quotes there. Set IP for VME. What do you guys uh, think about Junos? If you like the syntax of Junos, hit that like button. If you're using Junos already and you're pretty proficient with it, let me know in the comments or hit the like button as well. All right, so we set that configuration. So now if I do show configuration, display set, and only show me via me with the grep. So there you go, I've set the IP address of, of that VME, the virtual management ethernet. So the next thing I wanna do is then set a host name, right? Because we don't have a host name on this. So to do that, use set commands again, set system, and this one's just the host name, and I'll just give it a name, uh, switch, sw-junos1. And then the next thing we want to do is set the time because um, we don't have that set. Set system date, I believe. System date. What's, what's the date command on here? It doesn't like that. I don't remember. So I did this yesterday. I tried practicing it. And already I don't remember what I'm dealing with. <laughs> don't have I don't see the date but Richard said he's he's used some Juniper switches when he was in school and it's been a few years so and he's asking if I've seen Juniper switches in my career or uh, in consultations so in in my career I, I I actually do run into Juniper switches and routers currently so I have not deployed a Juniper switch from scratch but I have logged into one and have made changes. And usually it takes me a while to make those changes because I'm, I'm looking at what I'm supposed to do in order to make those change. Uh, in some of my consultation, I have seen a couple of, uh, here, uh, a couple of clients that have Juniper switches, but very small installation. So maybe a one use switch that they're using. Uh, Francisco says, uh, once I wrap my head around the CLI and Junos, I wanted every CLI to operate the same way. I, I really like the Juniper, the Junos CLI. It's really good. I, I will say that. Um, and and the, the functionality of it is really cool. So I'll try to show some of that if I can here. But I'm trying to figure out how to get the date and time set up here, right? So I'm going to look at this, uh, the the explore Juno CLI and see if I can find the date command, which um, all I'm finding is candidate. <laughs> Cause I thought it was under show, uh, under system, set system, set date didn't work. Cause uh, when, when you're trying to do it in Junos and you're typing in a command that actually doesn't work, it won't let you move any further. So we do show system. Um, I'm pretty, I, I thought it was under system. So I'm looking, I hit question mark. I'm trying to see if there's anything that talks about date here. We can set the name server. There's NTP, radius server, root authentication, uh, time zone. I can set the time zone which I want to pick America, Los Angeles, Los underscore Angeles. I assume that's what it's going to be. Yep. And I can hit tab for a lot of these. So I set that, but I can't set the date. I wonder why that is, right? So 
Let me scroll back up here. Do a fine date. I know all I'll find are things that say candidate. You have to be in a different mode. That might be true. Let's try it. Oh, I got to commit. Do we want to exit with uncommitted changes? Let's do a commit check real quick with what we got. Let's see what other things we can do with commit, right? So we can do just do commit confirm, commit check, commit and quit. I like that one. So we'll go out of the configuration mode here and set it. Set. We'll try the set date command, but I thought we had to be in there. So you can see now the host name has been configured. There it is. Yeah, you got to be out here. Set date. All right, it's 2020. Today is um, it's May 4th, and my current time is 9.41. I don't know what the second says. Can't set, can't assign requested address. Date to connect. Okay, well, at least this, the date's there, right? And just for the hell of it, show version. Why not, right? For the live stream, show version. You can see uh, this, my host name set, the model number, and what um, software version we're using for Junos, along with all these other things. I am not, I haven't gone into to understand what these are, but show version that gives you that information. All right, so we we set the date. We set the time zone. Let's go back into configuration mode. We set the host name. Uh, why don't we try to, uh, I don't know, let's look at setting up SSH. Is SSH uh, set up here? Show configuration, display set, grep SSH. Nothing's there. So let's do, uh, it's set system services and there's different services you could set there's there's ftp dns to enable a name server we have netconf so i might look into that a little bit more since i did a netconf uh live stream the other day and here's ssh so we can allow ssh we don't want to allow telnet and would, would just hitting enter enable this for us all right, let's look. And we are I'm almost at 45 minutes in, so I'll try to go a little bit faster. So let's see if um, the other things that I would configure are VLANs, right? So we enabled SSH. I'll clear that scroll back there. And configuring, uh, configuring VLANs can be done in two ways, right? So we can do show VLANs. And so here it's showing me that we only have one VLAN. Uh, and then to, to set up a VLAN, you again use a set commands. And then <clears throat> after VLANs, then you give it a name. So I'm going to call this, uh, like it like this, management net, which we will call it switch management net. And then we give it a VLAN number. So VLAN 103 is what I'm going to give it. Um, then I'll set up another one, set VLAN's uh, server net, VLAN ID 140. I'll set up another one, uh, a VoIP net to show you configuring a, a voice VLAN. And again, this is just the name that I'm giving it, VoIP net and I'm just giving it the VLAN number of 129. If you wanted to delete a VLAN, it's just delete VLANs, switch management, net VLAN ID 103. Uh, but maybe I should show you what that output looks like. So there we go. This is the candidate configuration that I'm looking at. Nothing has been committed yet, but you can do delete VLANs 
switch management net VLAN ID 103 and then do show VLANs again and you can see that it's not there. And so what I'll do is I'll add that back in, show VLANs and there it is again. All right, so we'll do, we'll just do a commit because I'm pretty sure that is good. And so now let's talk about VLAN membership, right? So in Cisco IOS, the way we would do, do this is you go into an interface and go uh, switch port trunk or switch port mode access and then switch port access VLAN, you know, whatever VLAN. So we can see after I committed the changes, because I enabled SSH, it's now creating the SSH keys and the commit's complete. Everything's good. Uh, SSH is enabled, it's got a key, VLANs have been committed to the running configuration. And now we wanna look at interfaces because if we do show configuration, display set, uh, I'll grep on interfaces, you can see that <clears throat> there, there's really nothing configured on those interfaces. So I'll hit conf uh, go into configure mode. now. I think I had mentioned that were two ways of creating VLANs. I, that What I meant was there's actually two ways of adding interfaces to VLANs. And so if we wanted to say this, this first port here, um, configure this port zero, this is GE dash zero slash zero slash zero, that first port. So if we wanted to go into there, you can, you can, add it to a VLAN straight from uh, the VLAN itself by doing set uh, VLANs, right, in the VLANs mode. I think I called it server net. And then you define the interface. So we do interface GE zero slash zero slash zero. I'll hit question mark uh, and then hit enter. We'll do a commit check to see what that looks like. Is that the right syntax for, for adding? Yeah, it is. And so if we wanted to then do it from the interface level, that's a little bit of a longer command. So let's say I wanted to configure the next, the, um, the next uh, port, right? The GE 0 slash 0 slash 1, then we would do set interfaces ge dash zero slash zero slash one and then we got us um should i need to put a unit number in there one and i thought i had to go into a family set interfaces i think we got to do that zero yeah so we got to put in the logical unit dot zero because we're in unit zero family. And um, the way that Juno says that there's different families of protocols. And so we're looking at ethernet switching for is, is what we're doing. And then we want to say VLAN members. And here you could either use the name or you could use the VLAN ID. So I never remember the VLAN names because I've been in environments where those names are crazy or they forgot to change them, but I do know the number I want to assign a VLAN ID number. So we'll do that. And let's let's say that this port was uh, an access port. What about the VLAN uh, for the voice network? And so that's a little bit different. So we do sh uh, sh set interfaces GE zero slash zero dot one or slash zero that slash one dot zero family. Um, no, no, that's wrong. Set interfaces. No, it's set internet ethernet switching. This is where this is where I'm getting mixed up. So that set ethernet is not there, and that's what I've read off of the Juno's guide, and so the I must have been reading the wrong one because I don't have the. All right, let's go back into the interface then. Zero slash zero slash one dot zero Ethernet. Whoa. Where am I? <laughs> 
set interfaces G E zero slash zero slash typing in everything incorrectly. Family. And and Sharon, yes, we, we are gonna specify if it's a access or trunk. Um VLAN. I thought there was a different command for setting it to a, a voice VLAN. But to answer your question, Sharon, that would be um, set interfaces GE. Let's just say on this port here, let's make port 11 my uplink. So we go zero slash zero slash 11 dot zero uh, family ethernet uh, switching. And then you actually have to type in port mode, I think, right? Port mode, which is not there. Let's actually add, see, I'm not doing this in the right way. I practiced this yesterday. Sorry, guys. Well, Maybe add the VLAN members for now. Uh, and we're going to do an open set, open a set of values. And I'm going to do 103, 129, and 140. I think that's the way to do it. There you go. And then set interfaces GE. I do want to convert this to a trunk. Family, INET, Ethernet switching. We do family, Ethernet switching. Where is my port mode? I've lost it, guys. This is why Junos has been hard for me. <laughs> uh, interface mode, I think is what we want. Interface mode. There it is. Convert it to a trunk. All right. So uh, I guess the syntax is a little bit different on some some Junos devices. But now if we go back to the other interface, set interfaces GE 0 slash 0 slash 0 dot 0, family Ethernet switching interface mode, and then you'll see access. So we made that an access access port and you can do the same for port one i think that's what i had configured to all right so let's see if the syntax is correct so i have interface mode config is not allowed under vlans interesting for port zero what do i have there Did I do that wrong? I'm not sure why it's not allowed for that one. So we do delete interfaces GE zero slash zero dot zero family ethernet switching interface mode access doing a commit check there and I feel I feel like I've been going back to when I first started networking learning uh, how a network operating system works and the syntax without having ever gone through training on it but um, you can sign up for a free Junos uh, training through Juniper's uh, G Junos Genius, and then be able to take the exam for free if you could, if you pass the, um, the exams as part of the Junos Genius training. So that worked. Let's just commit real quick and then check out our configuration. 
and I'm trying to remember how to show the configuration in this mode where, because we can do show interfaces, and then I want to pipe, oh, there it is, display set. So you can see that zero, unit zero, I think I got to use unit zero family. So we do set interfaces, GE zero slash zero slash zero, unit zero, family, ethernet switching interface mode. Oh, it's actually there already. Mode access, okay. And it added the VLAN members, okay. I didn't like that, even though it's there. Okay, let's try to fix this. No other window. Delete interfaces. Really screwing this up. Family Ethernet switching interface mode access. All right. So now, okay, that checks out. We got to commit and quit here because I want to do some show commands before we get closer to ending this, this, um, this live stream, which I definitely need to practice more of, of my Junos and understand how this specific Junos works, but it's been a good learning experience. So we can do show um, interfaces, GE, zero slash zero slash zero. So we can see that it's down. I want to plug something in. Let me see if I can find something to plug in here. So if you did join yesterday, I got a WLAN Pi. We'll see if this works. Although I need an Ethernet cable. So what I'm going to do is try to configure or plug in something so we can see that the interface is up. I'm plugging uh, my WLAN Pi into the Ethernet port because I want to see if it gives me power. If it doesn't give me any power, then um, when I'm not sure how this is going to work. Because I need power for my WLAN Pi. So it says something's plugged in uh, here on the command line interface. It is powering it up. All right, so let me get a um, let me get an Ethernet cable. So let's go here. All right, I have an Ethernet cable now. Plug it into port one. Port zero, actually. So we see that the green light went up. Let's show the interfaces. So now the link is up, all right? So that's great. We've got some other details that we could see here. Uh, input rate, output rate, any alarms. We could look at this in more detail. So let's see what that command is. It's um, show ethernet switching interfaces GE zero slash zero slash zero detail. And so that gives us a lot more information. So we can see here the type address family. Or I wonder if there's more detail if we do show interfaces. Here you go, we can do extensive, for example. So different types of show output for this interface. So you can see that data is going through on that port. What I want to do is configure my other switch. So let me see if I can get there. So I'll, what I want to do is try to uplink this to my Cisco switch. All right, so let's, I'm going to log into my Cisco switch real quick. If I can remember the password. All right. So I've got that. 
All right, so what port do I want to add this to? So I've got port three, which has nothing on it, and I want to configure port three as a trunk port. This And now again, I'm logged into my Cisco switch because I'm trying to do an uplink. So let's do um, interface G103, switch port mode trunk, and I'm only going to allow Port trunk allowed VLAN add 103, 129, 140. So there's, so it's in the switch port mode trunk. All right. Let's go back to this switch. So now if we do show um, configuration, display set. We don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if this is going to work. All right. So I have configured that interface as a trunk. I added some VLAN members. Um, rapid spanning tree is on there. So why don't I try to plug that in? All right. Okay, so you guys ready for this? We plugged it in. What does my switch say? I'm still pinging that IP address. Interface port three is up in a trunk on my Cisco switch. That link is up, and it's up in a trunk mode. All right. Uh, is LLDP enabled? LLDP is enabled. I did a show LLDP to see the process. It says it's enabled. Now we can do show LLDP neighbors. And it does see my switch there but I cannot ping the IP address of, of that switch. So I'm logging into, I'm in my Cisco switch and I wanna see the MAC address is off of 103 and it's showing it as VLAN one. So that's the interesting part, right? So what I think how to do show show IP address on this switch. <laughs> I wanted to see the management show interfaces via me. Hardware down. Physical link is down. Okay, show configuration, display set, troubleshooting here, troubleshooting. Unit zero family. So how do I attach that to VLAN 103, for example? So actually I wanna do something more detailed because this shows, so here's the current address right here. 9FE7 is what it ends in, right? So I'll move this window here. We don't see that MAC address because it's down, physical link is down. So if we go to configure, um, set interfaces via me, it is enabled VLAN tagging. Would that add it to the right VLAN? I don't know. Unit zero must be specified. So, uh, so I need to delete that now. 
VME VLAN tagging unit 130. Well, I guess that doesn't exist. Oh, I just kicked myself out. All I wanted to do was trunk the VLAN. Units a VLAN ID must be specified on tagged Ethernet interfaces. Show interfaces GE uh, 000 slash 11 display set. So the VLAN members are there. But it's the VME that I'm trying to assign, or how do I, I don't know how to assign, let's, let's say, um, an address to VLAN 103 is what I'm trying to do, right? So would that be set interfaces IRB? Interface name. So here's here's a one that Sharon is trying to help us out. Help me out here. Set interfaces VME unit zero family interface switching load access member. All right, let's try that. Let's definitely try that. VME uh, unit zero family Ethernet switching family INET. Although Ethernet switching doesn't show up there. I only have INET available and then address. I don't see something for VLAN. Virtual, virtual LAN identifier value for 802.1Q VLAN. Yeah, I'm missing something here. So I want to delete that though. Set delete interfaces VME unit 130. Because maybe that's where I need to assign the IP address. I don't know. Let's delete all of that too. Is it set interfaces VME unit 130? I mean, I could just do it to the management port, right? So, I mean, that would be the easiest way. But I need to trunk, I guess, trunk this port. Let me see if it's working. So, maybe we find out what the MAC address is of, of interface 0 first. Show... Zero, zero, zeros, um, and then detail. Yeah, detail. So we have a MAC address here, 9FE9. Is that what I saw earlier? 9FF4. Or how do I show the MAC address? Show MAC. See, these commands I, I knew in Cisco Terse. ETH switch. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm not sure how, how this works. So this is the one part I'll need to understand is setting up the trunk, the different VLANs, because we are not getting it the way I was hoping. And it's because I didn't look into how Genos actually works. All right. So we have here... Uh, I have, oh, you know what? I don't have a VLAN assigned to, f to, to that. All right, hold on. Let me switch it. All 
All right, so I notice zero, interface zero has no VLAN members, but interface one I have set to mode access with VLAN members 140. So will that work? Let's see. Yep, that did work because uh, you can't see it there, but the network interface for my WLAN Pi actually picked up an IP address on 192.168.140. So if then I go to a browser, dot, whoop, not 202. Not HTTPS. There you go. So I can actually reach the WLAN Pi, uh, and I can show you that that is the IP address. So I can ping it now, right? So if I then go, actually, it'll be easier to show you in this window. Let me split this. So we're pinging that. So how do we shut down an interface? What do I have here? So I, I want to shut it. I guess the easiest way is to just disconnect it. So what I'll do is I'll disconnect it. We should see, I'll remove this port. We'll see the pings go down. And there you go, you got timeouts. So I, th I think we have at least successfully configured an access port, and a trunk port, what I was not able to do is configure the management IP address, the inline management. So that's what what, what we need to work on. Let's see me, let me see if this, oh, there you go, the IP address got picked up. Okay, I'm going to try to configure this one last time. <laughs> Set interfaces VME, unit zero, family, inet, address, uh, 172.168.103.250, I think I wanted to add. And then set interfaces VME, unit zero, and then VLAN ID, 103. Let's do a commit check on that. Will it work? It succeeds. So now I'm going to ping the dot 50. And let's do a commit. Let's hope so. If it doesn't work, I'll have to take it offline and see whether or not I can get this working. So it's still timing out. What does my other SSH say? So I got something on VLAN 140, but it's this interface VME that's giving me, it, should it be the VME that I should be modifying this virtual management interface? And in my notes, when I was reading through the Junos uh, day one, that's what I thought we would we would have to set it to. And I thought that would work. So maybe it's set interfaces VME unit 0 0.103. I need to delete the other one.
then set interfaces via me unit 0 0.103 family inet address 172.16.103.250.24 failed trailing data yeah so I'm not I'm not even sure guys although I have this book here I really want to try to figure out how to set that VLAN interface to it but I mean we are running a little extra here so I'm, I, I will take it offline to figure out how to configure um, a VLAN interface for for Junos because I know it can be done and it's a routed VLAN interface so Juniper does have <coughs> documentation on how that works so we would have to go I would have to go and browse through uh, a, a topic on Juniper and see. So, for example, here, a routed VLAN interface on switches, right? It's called an RVI, actually. Create a layer two VLAN by assigning it a name, which we've, we've done. And then we have to assign an interface to the VLAN by naming the VLAN as a trunk naming the VLAN as a trunk member on the logical interface. So set interfaces, interface name, logical unit, which I thought, Sh Sharon, you were trying to tell me to do that, right? Which it didn't work. So we do set interfaces, interface name, and I'm thinking VME is not the one, All right? Unit zero. Family Ethernet switching, which we don't have. And that's because we have to assign that to an interface. So we, we could assign it to an interface. Oh, but that's assigning an uh, interface to that VLAN. So we need to do this one. Set interface VLAN unit. Oh, okay. Set interfaces VLAN, all right, unit. Is it unit zero? doesn't say we just do unit zero and then we do family inet address yep and I still got my pings going here that works let's do a commit check hopefully we can end this on a high note guys we'll do a commit Not sure if that took. I don't see a MAC address for that VLAN. That didn't work at all. <laughs> VLAN unit zero. <laughs> I'm really gonna have to look this up offline because that didn't work. I'll do one more set so interfaces VLAN unit zero dot one thirty or one oh three. Family INET address 172.16.103.250. No, that doesn't work. Whoa, what am I doing? All right. We can't get that to work. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I'm not actually using the management port for management. I wanted to assign management to a VLAN <clears throat> as a VLAN, a virtual interface on the switch. And uh, that didn't work because I just wanted to do an in-band management versus an out-of-band management. So right now it is passing data, as we can see with this ping to my WLAN Pi connected to port one on the Juniper switch. As you can see right there, we do have, have data passing through on this port this device it, it picked up an IP address of which I have here on 168 192.168.140.20 and then because of that we were able to successfully configure the uh, VLANs on here so if I scroll back show let me exit again show configuration display set 
this is all we were able to configure. So a user account as a super user, the host name, change the root password, set a time zone. Uh, we were able to uh, create an access port, put it on the right VLAN, and then on port 11, create a trunk port with its VLAN members. Um, and then be able to, I was trying to set an IP address uh, on that VLAN. Although I'll, I'll figure that out later because it's something with a VLAN unit. We saw that LLDP worked. Oh, here it is. So maybe this set VLAN's default layer three interface, IRB zero. Oh, I'll play around with it. But I want to thank you guys for joining me here on this live stream as I try to figure out Juniper first time going through it. Uh, configuring it from scratch and comparing that to Cisco iOS. So there are a lot of different syntax differences, although I really like the, the syntax of Junos because it allows us to look at some of these details and, and more, more granularity. You can pull up exact configurations and be detailed with what you want to look at. Uh, I did want to show something else, but uh, I don't know if we... We have the time and let me see if I can pull it up real quick because I got to remember if uh, we can use a match commands like show. Oh, here's a refresh, I think, is what I want. So what, what's cool is like when I'm doing a show interfaces, I just did a show interfaces refresh and it'll continually to refresh the output instead of having to always hit the up arrow and then hit the command in again. So there's different ways of of working with Junos and being more efficient with it. But that's what I wanted to work on is get, get a little bit more hands-on with Junos. So maybe in a future live stream, I will get a little bit more advanced and really learn now to, to configure some of the basics of that switch, uh, get things like tying it to a radius, getting the, the VLAN interface, a routable VLAN interface on there so I can manage it in band versus out band and really start looking at it a little bit more. So if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll try to respond to them. And, and also I'll make a comment about how I fixed the VLAN interface once I can get to it. But I want to thank you guys for joining me on this live stream and apologize for the, for the issues. But thank you again. And I will see you tomorrow. I'll try to go live again tomorrow, this time at 7 a.m. Pacific time. And I'll figure out a topic. I, I don't have one set yet, but I'll figure it out. But thank you guys.